Hi everyone, and welcome back to Anne's Family Recipe. Today I'm making two tasty fall treats. The first recipe I'm sharing is pumpkin spice cake pops. And this is an old recipe from Melissa De Arabian. She was one of the winners of the Best Food Network Star. But I fell in love with these as soon as I tried them because they taste exactly like my wedding cake. My husband Sean and I were married 12 years ago now in October. We had a beautiful fall wedding and hands down the best wedding cake I've ever had. So this is a homemade pumpkin spice cake with a delicious cream cheese frosting, and then you mix that all together and coat it in white chocolate, and it makes these fun bite-sized cake pops. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Now let's get to these cake pops. First up, I'm making my pumpkin spice cake. So I'm preparing my nine by 13 inch glass baking dish by spraying it with baking spray, and then I also preheated my oven to 375 degrees. Next, on to the dry ingredients. So this is two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then I also added in two and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And I have a great recipe for homemade pumpkin pie spice that I will link for you in my description box below. I whisked all the dry ingredients together and then set that bowl aside and started on the wet ingredients. So this was three quarters of a cup of brown sugar plus a quarter cup of white sugar. And then I added in two eggs and whisked this together. Next, I poured in three quarters of a cup of milk along with a teaspoon of vanilla extract and half a cup of vegetable oil. Lastly, for the pumpkin flavor, I added one cup of canned pumpkin puree. And this is just plain pumpkin puree, not the pumpkin pie filling. And then I carefully whisked that in. The final step here is to incorporate the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. So I just poured about a third of the wet ingredients into the flour mixture and stirred it around with a rubber spatula and continued doing that until everything was incorporated. It did suggest in the recipe that you finish off with a whisk. So I did that just to get rid of some of these lumps that were remaining. And then I poured the cake batter into my prepared glass baking dish. And this baked at 375 degrees for about 25 to 28 minutes. You definitely wanna start checking it at 25 minutes. You can press it in the middle, it should kind of spring back. And also if you put a toothpick into it, it should come out maybe with a couple of crumbs, but pretty much clean. While the cake cooled completely, I made my homemade cream cheese frosting. So this started with one eight ounce brick of room temperature cream cheese, along with one stick of unsalted butter, also at room temperature. This just makes it so much easier to incorporate the two together. And you could definitely use a stand mixer here. I just grabbed my hand mixer, and then you're slowly incorporating three and a half cups of powdered sugar. I did a couple of half cups at a time just to avoid a huge cloud of sugar in my face. But in the end, it's about a pound of powdered sugar. And this frosting will be quite thick. Typically, if I were making a cream cheese frosting to ice a cake, I'd add a little bit of milk to thin this out. But this is the glue that's holding our cake pops together. So you want that thicker consistency. Once the cake was cooled, I cut it into four pieces just so it was a little easier to handle, and then I crumbled it all into a large mixing bowl. Then I added in the frosting and stirred it all together with a rubber spatula until the mixture looked like wet graham cracker crumbs. I lined a cookie sheet with wax paper and then I used my medium cookie scoop to scoop out the cake pops. And I filled up this tray, but I made even more than this. I think this recipe made about 48 in total. Once these are all scooped, you wanna freeze them for about an hour. To coat my cake pops, I'm using vanilla almond bark today, but you could use white chocolate chips. If you melt those, you wanna add a couple tablespoons of shortening or coconut oil just to help turn that into a very smooth, glossy coating. But here I'm chopping up about half of this almond bark and putting it into a microwave safe bowl. Then I popped it into the microwave for 30 second increments and stirred it in between until it had completely melted. Mm -hmm. 
Also, while I was prepping my almond bark, I took the cake pops out of the freezer and rolled them in my hand just to smooth out the edges so that they would dip a little more easily. So now my almond bark is completely melted and I'm going to dip my cake pops. So I had a few of these lollipop sticks on hand with my baking supplies, so I wanted to show you how to do these. You can dip the end into some white chocolate and then stick it into the cake ball and then roll it around in the melted chocolate until it's coated. Ideally, you would wanna stand these up to dry them so that the coating goes over top in a smooth layer and there isn't any pooling at the bottom, but I didn't have anything right next to me to grab to put these into, so I just laid it onto my silicone matte lined baking sheet, which worked out just fine. And then you could also do these without the sticks, so I'm showing you that here as well. You can use a fork to toss it around in the melted almond bark, and then a toothpick or a wooden skewer to slide them onto your lined tray. I used a little extra melted almond bark as a decoration over top. I took a spoon and sort of drizzled it over the top of the cake pops. Also, when the white chocolate on the outside is wet, you could sprinkle some pumpkin pie spice onto it too so that it adheres and makes a little decoration. These are ultra moist and taste incredible. Definitely try these out. Secondly, today is a super fast and easy kind of fall Halloween chocolate bark. It is a chocolate pretzel caramel apple bark. The one thing you're gonna notice about it as soon as I show you the ingredients, it's something you wanna eat right away. It's not something that has a long shelf life that's very giftable. Like when you think around the holidays, people make homemade bark with dried fruits and nuts in it, and you can package it up and sort of give it out and store it a little bit before you eat it. This you wanna eat right away because there are fresh cut apples on top, but it is an amazing flavor combination. Chocolate covered pretzels and like chocolate covered caramel apples are two of my favorite sweet treats. So this just kind of combined all of these delicious things together. I started by dicing up my green apple and I ended up only using one for this recipe. You can see here there was a brown spot on mine and since there's this visual appeal to the bark, I did cut that off so that all the apples would be white with the green skin. And you can dice these as large or as finely as you would like. Next up, I wanted to gather my toppings before I melted the chocolate. So I grabbed my bag of pretzel twists and I heated up my caramel topping. This would be a great party treat or an after school snack, but like I mentioned before, I wanted this to be eaten in one sitting, so I didn't wanna to make too much. So I just took one bag of dark chocolate chips. You could use any type of chocolate you want, semi-sweet, milk, white, and then I melted that in a microwave safe bowl. Similar to that almond bark earlier, you're going to do this in 30 second increments and stir it with a rubber spatula until it is completely melted. Then I spread this out on my silicone baking mat. And if you don't have one of these, I'll link one for you in the description box below because these are so handy to have this time of year for candy making, baking, and even cooking both sweet and savory foods. Once I spread the chocolate out, I topped it with the pretzel twists and then I sprinkled my green apples all over the top. I tried to press them into the chocolate as best as I could so that they would adhere. I also saw a tip after I made this that you could pat them dry with a paper towel too so they stick a little bit better. And then lastly, I drizzled my melted caramel sauce over top. Now, if you wanted to melt down some caramel candies, they might have a more solid texture once this bark cools, but this worked out just fine and you got that caramel flavor in the end. So this only took about 10 minutes in the fridge until it's set up. Then I could carefully remove it, and you can see just how easily it comes off of the silicone baking mat, and then break it up into chunks. And my kids enjoyed this, my husband loved this, I love this. It was a tasty and festive fall treat. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can follow me over on Instagram at Anne's Family Recipe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked my delicious fall treats here today. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen and I'll see you again soon.